Welcome back to another video brought to you by ISCA Engineering. We are continuing our series in motors and control systems. In the last video, we covered transformer principles. In this video, we will be looking at the transformer connections and systems. We will cover topics such as single phase transformers, three phase transformers, transformer testing, and a few others. Before we dive into the video, if you are not yet subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and leave a comment. Also hit the notification button so that you won't miss any of the new videos that are uploaded. Let's get started by discussing transformer polarity. What exactly is transformer polarity? Transformer polarity refers to the relative direction of the induced voltages between the high and low voltage terminals. Knowing this is essential in making three phase and single phase transformer connections. As you can see in the drawing, H1 and H2 are the high voltage windings and X1 and X2 are the low voltage windings. By convention, H1 and X1 have the same polarity. This means that when H1 is instantaneously positive, X1 is also instantaneously positive. Transformers can either have additive or subtractive polarity. What this refers to is the location of the H and X terminals as they are brought out of the transformers case. Looking at the drawing, when X1 is diagonally from H1, the transformer is said to have additive polarity, and when X1 is directly across from H1, then the transformer has subtractive polarity. Now onto single phase transformers. These transformers can be used wherever systems that operate at 120 volts are needed. The step down transformers are installed when the circuits are not rated for the line voltage. Nowadays, Control circuits are designed using 24 volts DC, but single phase transformers are still needed to step down voltage for devices that operate at 120 volts AC. The drawing provided shows the typical connection for a step down control transformer and also shows the power supply needed to convert 120 volts AC to 24 volts DC. The primary side, H1 and H2, will be the line voltage and the secondary, X1 and X2, will be the voltage for the control circuit. Control transformers are available in types such as single, dual, and multi-tap. The dual and multi-tap allow reduced control voltage from a variety of voltage sources to meet a variety of applications. Here is an example of a typical dual primary transformer used to step down 240 volts or 480 volts down to 120 volts. H1, H2, H3, and H4 are used for the primary connections. X1 and X2 are used as the secondary connections and can have 120 volts from either a 240 volts or 480 volts line. If the transformer is used to step down 480 volts down to 120 volts, the primary windings are connected in series by a jumper wire or metal link. If the transformer is used to step down 240 volts down to 120 volts, then the primary windings are connected in parallel with each other. In one of our earlier videos, we covered how to properly ground a transformer's secondary. The ground must be connected to X2 to ensure that an accidental ground in the control circuit will not start the motor or make the stop button inoperative. An additional requirement is that the transformer must be protected by fuses or circuit breakers. These fuses can be placed on the primary, secondary, or on both sides. Here at ISCA, we have made it a good practice to protect both the primary and secondary of the transformer. The fuse or circuit breakers must also be properly sized for the control circuit. Let's now go over three phase transformers. Three phase transformers are used to transmit high voltages in three phase systems. These transformers are connected in three phase Y, delta, or a combination of both. These two names come from the way the windings are connected inside the transformer. There are two types of ways the secondary distribution is commonly used. They are the three-phase three-wire system and the three-phase four-wire system. In both of these systems, the secondary voltages are the same for all three phases. Shown here is a typical three-phase, three-wire delta connected transformer. The delta connected transformer consists of three transformer windings connected end to end. For these transformers, phase voltage equals the line voltage and the line current is equal to phase current times 1.73. The other type is the three phase four wire system. 
Shown here is a typical Y-connected three-phase, four-wire distribution system. The three phases connect at a common point, which is called the neutral. For the Y-connected transformers, the phase-to-phase -phase voltage is equal to the phase-to-neutral voltage multiplied by 1.73, and the line current is equal to the phase current. The delta to Y is the most commonly used three-phase connection. We provided a drawing showing the delta to Y configuration. The secondary provides a neutral point for supplying line to neutral for single phase devices and is also grounded for safety reasons. Instrument transformers are used in conjunction with instruments such as amateurs, voltmeters, and relays for protective purposes. There are two types of instrument transformer, and they are the potential transformer and current transformer. The potential transformer operates in the same principle as the power transformer except the capacity of the potential transformer is smaller. These transformers step down voltage to a lower level to make it possible to be measured by standard instruments with coil ratings of 120 volts. Current transformers are used to step down current of power systems to a lower level to make it possible to be measured by standard instruments. Now let's go over a few of the failures that can occur in transformers. One of them is winding failures, which are due to open windings and or short circuits between coil turns, coil individual phases, and coil to ground. Core faults are due to insulation failures and shorted laminations. Another failure that can happen is terminal failures, and these happen due to open leads, loose connections, and short circuits. This concludes the video on transformer connections and systems. Thank you for sticking with us to the end of the video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave it in the comments section below. In the next video, we will be looking at control devices. Follow us on Instagram at ISCA underscore engineering underscore and Facebook at ISCA engineering. The links will be provided in the description. There we post daily content on electricity, controls, automation, and much more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.